My name is Kathy Locke. I'm a San Francisco-based figurative painter, graduate professor at the Academy of Art University, and editor-in-chief of musingsonart.org. Today I'm talking with Ginny Bailes, a fellow professor at the Academy and contemporary artist, about exhibiting in China five times over a 14-month period. So five trips to China. Uh, so the first trip to China, how did that come about? That was at the Shanghai Oil Painting and Sculpture. You did an exhibition there. What what it came through is um, I saw a opportunity um, looking for artists to become part of a art exhibit and tour, and. Um, I applied for it. When I got accepted, I first thought, this is sort of strange. I don't know if I really truly believe that this is a normal type of opportunity. But I um, did my research and then decided to go. And, and at that point, I had absolutely no experience with China at all. Absolutely no experience. <laughs> it was, it, I had traveled internationally to Europe in the past. But this was way different. Um, was this in Shanghai? It was in Shanghai, yes, but it did a tour. It was just surreal because we spent time with also Chinese artists where we did some plein air artworks too. And at that time I did um, some recordings and did some drawings. So I didn't do any oil painting where my Chinese counterparts partake in oil painting exercises. Yes, but your art practice involves um, more of a multimedia approach. So though they were using oil on canvas, or you're, you're using another uh, medium, which you, I know you've been working with for a couple of years of these recordings of various places. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. It was. It was really exciting. And I think um, the fact is I was approaching the plein air events different than my Chinese counterparts because they were assuming that it would be the traditional way of painting in one spot. And so when I'd walk off somewhere and do a recording, they were intrigued that that was art making. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what artwork did you show at this exhibition? The first um, time I went to China, it was a video piece. Oh, really? It was a video piece. And it was from my artist residency at, in Mississippi oh. at the Noxipi, at the Choctaw Refuge. Audio from that video was sounds from that refuge of, I, I sort of called it the southern jungle because it really had this sort of deep, rich sound. Mm -hmm. And the, vi the video of that video art installation was from a gun range. And the gun range um, showed these, you know, sort of um, targets being shot in ins inside gun range. And I juxtaposed that with the audio from the refuge. I find it interesting, um, having known you before for many years, and then to have watched this evolution of um, your China experience, and then to see how much that influenced your art practice. Then you went back to China a second time. Yeah. Or how did the second trip come about? Yeah, um, I think the one thing in uh, Chinese culture as a complete complement is that they're masters at fostering relationships. So from the first trip, I was asked to come back. To, um, you know, from the first trip, you show up, you do dinner, people greet you with all these different things they bring you to your home. I think, from my experience here in the Western culture, it takes people sometimes a while before they let you in. Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked by how open they were. And come back, and we want you back. And I think that was really refreshing in a way. It helped my hardness and my core. Especially as an artist, because we deal with so much rejection um, as part of our business. Um, and then to come to a completely foreign, new environment and have them be so warm and welcoming. It was must have been a really lovely experience. And, it, and I think that's the key to it. I, I never felt, you know, uh, a, a smile can go a long way when you smile mm -hmm. to somebody and mm -hmm. they give you this huge smile back and then you're like, yes, you know, yes in humanity. You know, right, it's right. pretty, that connection right. um, sort of gave me faith in sort of what, in hopefulness 
and what we can accomplish and what art can accomplish that even when our leaders can't get along mm-hmm. and peg somebody as the bad person it's it's the people on the ground doing the everyday work that really can make these lasting connections right yeah and i love um you maintain a weekly blog which is quite an accomplishment and I, and i love the way you started talking about the common humanity um at that point in your visits uh so um there were four uh blog posts that you posted and i just was wondering um and i don't even know how to correctly pronounce these yeah. but uh ying china e e e yeah that's and that's first it was 1 2 3 yeah uh, so e means what now one one and then the second one is er er 2 that's 2 sun 3 ah. 2 earth ah 2 means earth Okay, so that's, that's Earth different. in China and Earth in English. So now at this point, um, you're starting to refer to China as your second home, and you're using words like collaboration and yeah. learning experience. So it seems like um, you've gone from the initial shock of, oh, my gosh, these are human beings, um, and they're warm and welcoming, to now you're really... Um, embracing their culture and the opportunity that is being laid at your feet um, and you're starting to get more involved Um, and so maybe you could talk about the second trip and the exhibition there and what yeah the spring of 2016 I from the previous trip I had became really good friends with some of the professors that I was on um, the first trip with from China and I think, of course, we sort of bonded because of being a teacher and right. also art. And um, I think teachers and educators sort of have that sensibility how we think. Right. Sort of methodical, okay, critical, think about this. And the process is really important. And that was at the Sculpture and Painting Institute Museum. It was just an amazing experience because most of the artists in that were at, from academia. I think our approach was similar. But there was a difference in the fact that I think total in that exhibit, there might have only been less than four female artists in that. Mm -hmm. And I was the only female artist from the West in that Mm -hmm. exhibit. So there is one photo that shows me standing underneath sort of the logo, and I'm the only female. Yeah, I think that's this picture, yeah. Right? (laughs) Well, that gives this photo new meaning. Right. uh, Especially since I'm a female artist. Exactly. And there is a hierarchy, not only in Western and Eastern culture, with women's roles. Some of the dinners I went to, you know, the women sat at a different table. Mm. Not all the time. Because I was the guest and artist, I was sort of allowed to sort of sit at the main table. table. (laughs) But I really became conscious of that because of how that met my presence, uh, just being a female, really was a big deal mm. and a difference, Western and Eastern culture. Mm. And the fact that I have, when I teach at the Academy of Art University, majority mm. of my students are women, mm-hmm. international women mm-hmm. from all over. Mm-hmm. And that we do have to plant those seeds and be the first. Yeah, it's interesting. I recently read an article um, maybe it was an artsy about in the galleries in the United States it's primarily 80 percent male um, though in all of the classes I've taught it's always been primarily female right. so that means that there's in the United States and I'm assuming worldwide that there is a major uh, inequality going on with women's ability to show their work. Women not only were missing out, cult, our art culture and art history is missing out on 50% of the population in mm-hmm. their perspective and view. Mm-hmm. And regardless if you're conceptual, abstract, or realistic mm-hmm. artist, mm-hmm. we all speak to the human experience in some way. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, yeah. Through beauty, through social political work, it doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, any type of work you do, it speaks to the human experience so you're missing out on that human experience right so what did you show on this exhibit in this exhibit I showed some acrylic pieces that I shaped into the character two where we just discussed earlier which means like and then I showed some pen and ink drawings that I had created on the previous trip 
in my plain air where I'm ambidextrous and I um, create works with both hands. And so I did one line to the left to the right and then the other hand the right to the left. And sort of those drawings were based on sort of the energy in that moment. So I captured that vibration of that area outside. As artists, no matter what the output is, we become we come up with our own manifestos, mm -hmm. rituals and rules mm -hmm. that guide us. Right. right. It just, it's sort of like our, our language, the perspectives, and then understanding where's my bias, where do I come into this. Right, and then there's that. It is, yeah. it's a challenge. Right. But it really, you know, it's a challenge worth taking. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it broadens our experience so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. It makes you sort of refocus on what's important when you get back home. Yeah, I think it's so valuable. I mean, uh, travel is the most valuable thing you can buy for yourself um, to open up your perspective of the rest of the world and and you know one of the things I loved reading from your blog about your travels is how you evolve in your fourth trip and you're starting to talk about um, China as home and art yeah. then you take it a step farther and you go art defines home and so that's um, maybe you could talk about how you evolved to I, that I think that's really great I think so that trip, um, the home trip, I was asked to um, curate an exhibit. I kept on thinking, okay, what do I want this exhibit to be about, right? And what did I learn from these trips? And I wanted it to be about home and that definition of home. Mm -hmm. Because I think as you get older, mm -hmm. we sort of reflect back on what, it, what was our home or how do we make home, what mm -hmm. is important. I realized that you can make home anywhere. It's sort of a state of mind, mm -hmm. home, right? Mm -hmm. And so I asked some of these professors that I had exhibited before um, to give create works based on their interpretation of home. Ah. And so... So, so you yeah. were the curator, and then you um, wrote up a document that described what you w was you were looking for, and then did you choose the artist that you wanted to, to exhibit? What I did is I picked the artist... I told them the theme, uh -huh. and then I asked them to write what it meant to them uh -huh. about home. That was a challenge, because not only did I had to translate what they wrote, um, not all of them understood exactly what I was asking, because nobody had asked them to do that before. So I was asking them something from a Western perspective in their practice, where they were used to just creating the work and putting it on the wall. And I was like, no, that's not going to happen here. <laughs> so I not only created the concept, developed the layout, I flew there, displayed the show, installed the show, did the lighting, put mm. the labels on the wall, mm. and did everything for that exhibit. Mm. In a foreign country where I did not speak the language, the experience, it was a challenge because some of the artists gave me, showed up with 12 pieces and I only wanted four and didn't understand why I didn't put all 12 in. Their work looked more powerful when I picked less right. and let the wall breathe. Right, right. And that sort of discussion, that's a challenge enough in the States when that No, comes. it is. Just, I just want to step back because I yeah. think you mentioned something that when you asked them to write about home, um, did they send that in those that text to you before the exhibition? And then was there a back and forth dialogue with you and the artist on what they had written? Yes, um, some of them had sent me um, the information, you know, right before I was going to get there on the plane. But the inspiration some of the information was so hard to understand the context because it spoke to old ancient Chinese proverbs and sayings and historical time periods that I had no idea. Mm. So I had to spend the time researching and educating. asking, yeah, educating myself, asking my assistant, what does this mean? Uh -huh. I have no idea who this individual is. It's like um, old proverbs we have here or old sayings. That or sayings we say here, where even teaching at the academy, where I'll say, "Good job, rock star," and they're like, "What do you? What is a rock star?" <laughs> you know, like they look at me, and I'm like, "Oh my!" You know, there's certain things that are ingrained, and and um, some of the inspiration. What is this meaning? Uh -huh. So not only what did it get translated, I needed the meaning translated, uh -huh. and then do the research to understand that translation. <laughs> 
Yeah, if you can curate in China, you can do it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so the artwork, as it ended up and it was hanging on the wall, um, was there, you know, a theme of something that hit you as an American looking at um, Chinese artists uh, create work that spoke to them about home? Uh, they're very smart and subversively saying what they want to say, but in a very sophisticated manner. Where a Westerner, we might be a little bit more blaze of glory uh -huh. approach. And I think that, um, I, I think we're seeing exciting changes in China just with um, contemporary art and what contemporary art does. If you're a contemporary artist, you're asking questions. You're critically thinking. And that's what an art practice does. When you really know artists is asking these questions, they're asking these questions. And it, they will continue to speak to their human experience. You can't shut down creativity. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no. So no. you were really struck by the sophisticated manner upon which the other Chinese artists approach this subject matter. Absolutely. Yeah. Less is more. Uh -huh. Quality. Um, vigor, vigorous art practice. Uh -huh. Vigorous approach. Right? Yeah. And having the cultural stigma of being an artist and being an educator is respected. In China? In China. Right. Where Chinese art students, they'd want to take a picture with me because I was a teacher and I was respected. I was an educator. You're a respected individual. That's not really a common occurrence here in not Western at all. society. Not at all. That's one thing that has drawn me to Russia. Um, and has made me feel that Russia is my second home, um, is that an artist is hocked in Russia um, because, you know, the enormous amount of education to become a professional artist, um, and it's really looked on as a very high position um, with great respect, uh, which is completely the opposite of how I feel I'm treated here in the United States. I think not all skill sets are going to receive high levels of monetary compensation. Mm -hmm. And in Europe and other places, you'll see grants, you'll see public art programs built into current governmental structures. Here, you have to fight for every funding. Every time there's a federal, uh, you know, Americans for the Arts is a wonderful air advocacy, but they have to fight for every single, mo you know, dollar. I think in China, you have, you know, a certain high level of respect for craftsmanship. Right and education. I'm not saying that American students don't appreciate education because I think they do. They want it, but I think we need to look at a different way of how we view educators. Mm -hmm. right? I, I remember at um, one point last year when I came over to and you were talking about there were so many more opportunities for artists in China. In China, yeah. the Chinese artists. Um, and that's certainly something that we have been talking about as two fellow artists um, trying to make our way and pay our bills um, at the lack and the, and the challenge of opportunities here in the United States. It is a challenge. I mean, I think what you're seeing is a really economic upturn happening in China. Um, that in 10 to 15 years they will become the superpower and right. overcome our economy. Right, the leading. Leading, yeah. and they are moving forward, and they're moving forward in the arts, and they have exciting stuff in different virtual reality and um, video installation in different types of works and really wonderful critical thinking and conceptual. Um, I'd like to see that happen more here in the States.